The Boeing Starliner's unexpected failure has left NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams stranded in space for up to nine months, a situation with potentially severe consequences for their health. From visible weight loss and graying hair to noticeable facial changes, the toll of extended space travel is undeniable. Trapped aboard the ISS, they've endured prolonged exposure to extreme microgravity and radiation levels, nearly 365 times higher than on Earth. But just how dangerous are these effects? What long-term risks do astronauts face after such an extended stay in space? And most importantly, how is NASA planning to help them recover after SpaceX Dragon's daring rescue mission? Stay with us as we break down the shocking science behind their ordeal in today's episode of TechMap. NASA astronauts Barry Butch, Wilmore, and Sunita, Suni Williams, have finally returned to Earth on March 18 after an unexpected nine-month stay in space, far beyond their originally planned one-week mission. What was supposed to be a routine trip turned into an endurance test due to technical setbacks with the Boeing Starliner, pushing the boundaries of both human resilience and technology. Their safe return aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon Freedom was a relief, but their condition upon landing immediately raised concerns about the toll of prolonged space travel. While both astronauts waved to onlookers, they needed mobility assistance clear signs of muscle weakness and balance issues, likely due to the well-documented effects of long-term microgravity exposure. NASA's senior administrator Joel Montalbano described their landing as beautiful and assured the public they were doing great, though this statement likely referred to the mission's safe completion rather than a full medical assessment. However, sharp-eyed observers noticed something striking. SUNY Williams appeared visibly thinner and exhausted, sparking discussions about the physiological effects of her extended time in orbit. Factors such as fluid loss, muscle atrophy, and the sheer mental and physical strain of space travel and re-entry could all play a role in her altered appearance. Another significant change is that SUNY's hair color has turned from black to gray proving that the aging process on her body has been happening at an accelerated rate over the past nine months. As the world awaits official health reports, social media is already buzzing with speculation. Some users pointed out noticeable changes in SUNY Williams' facial structure, particularly around her chin, with online discussions debating whether it looked extended or even deformed. Could this be a temporary effect of space adaptation or does it hint at deeper, long-term physiological changes? And is all that really serious? According to experts, the long stay in microgravity and exposure to space radiation have had a significant impact on their health, including physiological changes, risk of bone loss, muscle deterioration, and psychological effects. Pulmonologist Dr. Vinay Gupta highlighted that the absence of gravity means muscles lack the resistance they experience on Earth, leading to muscle atrophy. Biomedical engineer Dr. John Jackwish suggested that impaired digestion in space, also due to the lack of gravity, could further contribute to muscle and bone loss. Former NASA astronaut Leroy Chow cautioned that SUNY Williams might experience difficulty walking due to the loss of the thick skin on the soles of the feet, a condition sometimes referred to as baby feet. Spending approximately nine months in the microgravity environment of space is known to induce a range of physiological adaptations in the human body. One of the most significant impacts is on the musculoskeletal system. Without the constant pull of Earth's gravity, the bones in the lower body, including the legs, hips, and spine, experience reduced load-bearing. This leads to a decrease in bone density, estimated at around 1% per month, which is comparable to an entire year of aging on Earth. Consequently, a nine-month mission could result in a substantial loss of bone mineral density, potentially elevating the risk of fractures both immediately after returning to Earth and in the long term. Similarly, the lack of gravitational resistance causes muscles, especially those in the legs and back, 
to weaken and atrophy. This muscle deconditioning can make it difficult for astronauts to support their own weight upon returning to Earth, as evidenced by the standard procedure of assisting them with mobility aids after landing. Interestingly, the absence of gravity also allows the spine to lengthen, often resulting in a temporary increase in height for astronauts in orbit. This effect is typically reversed once the astronaut returns to Earth's gravitational pull. The cardiovascular system also undergoes significant changes in space. In microgravity, bodily fluids, which are normally pulled downwards by gravity, shift upwards towards the head. This fluid redistribution can lead to facial swelling, a phenomenon often referred to as puffy face syndrome, and may also contribute to increased pressure within the skull. So, is this the correct explanation for Sunni's unusual chin? Conversely, the lower body may experience a decrease in fluid volume, sometimes referred to as chicken legs. These fluid shifts can also impact vision. The increased intracranial pressure can press on the optic nerve, potentially leading to a condition known as spaceflight-associated neuroocular syndrome, ITURI-SINS with symptoms including blurred vision. Furthermore, the heart, which does not need to work as hard to pump blood against gravity, may undergo deconditioning, leading to a decrease in aerobic capacity. Blood circulation tends to slow down, and the production of red blood cells may also be reduced. A common issue upon returning to Earth is orthostatic intolerance, where the body struggles to regulate blood pressure when transitioning from a lying or sitting position to standing. The neurological system is also affected by the space environment. As mentioned, vision can be impaired due to fluid shifts and increased intracranial pressure. The vestibular system, located in the inner ear, which is crucial for maintaining balance and spatial orientation, is also impacted by microgravity. This can lead to issues with balance and coordination, disorientation, and space motion sickness. Even after Sunni and Butch returned home and were finally able to breathe Earth's air, they still wouldn't feel comfortable. They will feel heavy, as their vestibular system will still be recovering, throwing off their balance. They will often experience the sensation of spinning, and moving their head too quickly will be disorienting and painful. The sudden shift of fluid in their inner ear will make it feel as though they turn their head much faster than they actually do. Rehabilitation programs for returning astronauts often focus on helping them regain these fundamental motor skills. The immune system's function can also be compromised during spaceflight. Additionally, exposure to space radiation poses a significant health risk, potentially increasing the likelihood of cancer and other long-term health issues. Stress and radiation exposure may explain why Sunni Williams is turning noticeably gray. Beyond these major systems, astronauts may experience weight loss due to fluid loss and changes in appetite, and their skin can become more fragile and heal at a slower rate. This may be due to a lack of essential vitamins due to limited fresh food in space. Frank Rubio, who holds the record for the longest single space flight by a NASA astronaut, spending 371 days in space, emphasized the strong craving for fresh food, particularly salads, upon his return. Research has also indicated that even gene expression within the body can be altered during prolonged space missions. For example, Scott Kelly famously spent 340 days in space and experienced temporary changes in gene expression, with approximately 7% of his genes showing altered activity even six months after his return. He is part of the twin study, which provided a unique opportunity to compare his physiological changes with those of his identical twin brother, Mark, who remained on Earth. Upon their return to Earth, astronauts like Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams undergo a rigorous series of medical evaluations at NASA's Johnson Space Center. These post-flight assessments are designed to analyze the full impact of long-duration space missions on the human body. The testing is extensive, covering multiple physiological systems. 
astronauts undergo laboratory evaluations, including blood tests to assess cell counts and overall biochemistry, electrolyte level checks, kidney and liver function tests, and endocrine profiling to monitor hormone balance. Cardiovascular health is examined through cholesterol and triglyceride assessments, while musculoskeletal health is closely monitored using bone density scans, DXA, to detect any bone loss caused by prolonged weightlessness. In addition to these internal evaluations, astronauts also undergo dermatological screenings for any skin abnormalities, ophthalmological exams to assess vision changes, and audiological tests to check hearing health. Their cardiopulmonary, gastrointestinal, reproductive, and behavioral health are also closely monitored, reflecting the wide-ranging effects space travel can have on the human body. After these initial medical checks, astronauts who have spent extended periods in space participate in a carefully structured rehabilitation program led by NASA's Astronaut Strength, Conditioning, and Rehabilitation ASCR, specialists. This program typically lasts 45 days, with daily two-hour training sessions seven days a week. Each astronaut follows a customized rehabilitation plan based on their specific medical needs and mission experiences. The recovery program is divided into three key phases. First, immediate post-landing phase, focuses on regaining basic mobility, flexibility, and muscle strength. Astronauts undergo gait training, range of motion exercises, and obstacle drills to improve coordination. Second, rebuilding strength and endurance. This phase includes proprioceptive exercises to restore balance and spatial awareness, and cardiovascular training to rebuild stamina. Third, functional performance recovery. The final and most intensive stage, where astronauts perform high-intensity exercises, simulating real-world movements to regain peak physical condition. A crucial part of this phase is neurovestibular rehabilitation, which helps counter dizziness and balance issues caused by microgravity's effects on the inner ear. But NASA's care for its astronauts doesn't end there. Long-term health monitoring continues throughout their careers, with annual checkups designed to detect and manage any potential long-term effects of space travel. At this point, we can take comfort in knowing that Butch and Suni are receiving top-tier medical care. Hopefully, they'll make a full recovery soon. Let's keep them in our thoughts. Drop your best wishes for them in the comments below. That mission, called Crew Flight Test CFT, launched on June 5th sending NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to the International Space Station ISS, for a roughly 10-day stay. Starliner made it to the orbiting lab safely, but it experienced propulsion system helium leaks and thruster failures along the way, and NASA extended CFT repeatedly to study the issues. Finally, on August 24, the agency decided to bring Starliner home uncrewed which occurred without incident on September 6 in the New Mexico desert. Williams and Wilmore were reassigned to a long-duration ISS mission, which wrapped up March 18 with the splashdown of SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule, Freedom.